Hello and welcome. Today we'll be doing a battery replacement on the iPod Shuffle 4th Gen. Yeah, so in order to open this model up, it pretty much just lifts up at the back there uh, with the clip. Yeah, just do what I do, pull it up like that. You might want to use a bit of heat and a bit of alcohol. I didn't have to do that in this one because the battery was already expanded, which was pushing it up. You don't want to use too much force though because you can bend that clip back there and then it'll just look ugly. Um, so yeah, just be a bit careful with it. So yeah, after you've got the back off, you just want to pry up that battery. It's just held down with a bit of adhesive. And now we want to remove that ribbon cable. Yeah, and I find that ribbon cable is usually in there pretty tight as well. So just be very gentle with it. I know I kind of butcher it a little bit in this video. Yeah, maybe don't do what I do here and try and rip it out with the tweezers. Because you can, like, yeah, rip a hole in it, cause it to not function. Yeah, and that ribbon cable there is just for the buttons. The buttons on the front. And now there's only one screw on this iPod holding that logic board in there. So just get your screwdriver out and undo that screw. Yeah, and because it only uses one screw, make sure you don't lose it either. Because if you do, then every time you go to plug in the headphone, it might push the whole logic board into the inside the iPod, which would not be good, would it? And yeah, in order to take that logic board out, there is just that little white bit of plastic there under the headphone jack. So just remove that as well. And yeah, don't lose that piece either. Because again, if you do, every time you put the headphone in, it'll push the whole logic board in. And so to remove the logic board, just get some tweezers, put it in the headphone jack uh, and push it back a little bit. And then it should just be able to slide out just like that. And yeah, now once you've got the logic board out, this is always a good time to inspect for any water damage or anything like that. Uh, yeah, now coming over to the soldering iron. Before we actually remove the battery, there's a bit of rubber adhesive or a rubber coating that's just over the uh, solder joints there. So we want to get that off with some tweezers first. Comes off pretty easy. Yeah, and yeah, just apply some flux and then heat that up with the soldering iron. I like to pull the cable slightly as I'm soldering so it just falls out. But don't pull too hard because um, you can rip traces off the PCB there. So just be gentle. Uh, yeah, and once we've got that battery out, you want to like get some... First of all, you want to use lead-free solder. And once you take the battery out, you want to just like flood those two uh, pads with a bunch of new lead-free solder because it just flows a lot more easy. And if you don't do that, the solder won't flow as well. Like it'll be all oxidized and all that. And that's why flux is good as well. It just makes the solder flow a whole lot better. So if you don't have flux or you don't have lead free solder, I would definitely buy those two things. Otherwise it could just look very ugly and not go together very smoothly. Yeah, so now for the new battery, I like to use this uh, helping hands tool just to hold the logic board in place while I put the new battery in. Just makes it a whole lot easier. Yeah, so now just taking that new battery and it's the uh, positive lead, the red lead on the outer side and the black lead on the inner side. So don't mix those two up. And yeah, after you've put those two wires in there, you want to um, clean them up a little bit on the back, like snip them down, make sure they're soldered in properly. Just copy what I do pretty much and you'll be good. Yeah, if you don't, tr if you don't snip down those wires there, they could um, come into contact with the housing and cause a short circuit. So yeah, you do want to do this part and clean it up and everything. Yeah, and then just use some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip to clean away all that excess flux there at the end. Yeah, and so once we've installed that battery, it's ready to go back together now. So just grab your logic board, grab your housing. Uh, you want to make sure those wires are in the correct position. So yeah, when you're putting this back in, you also want to make sure that the, um, the lock switch lines up at the top there make sure you haven't moved the position because if it doesn't line up then well you have to open it up and do it again obviously so yeah just putting that back in now grab your screw put that back in grab that little white piece of plastic which you hopefully didn't lose because if you did then that's just not going to be good And now tucking that battery back in as well. Yeah, so this is probably the most important part of this whole process. When you're putting that battery back in, you want to make sure you tuck those wires out of the way, like how it was when you opened it. Because uh, if you don't, the battery will sit up a lot more than what it's supposed to. And you probably won't be able to close the thing properly. And it'll just look ugly and it'll be very obvious that it's been opened. So yeah, grabbing your tweezers and just tucking those wires in underneath there really get them up into the corners and just putting your battery back just like that 
Oh, yep, and obviously don't forget to plug those buttons back in either. Alright, now that's back together, this is always a good time to test it and see that it all works and everything. Um, so yeah, just plugging it in, making sure that battery charges up, then making sure that you're happy with it and that it all works properly and everything. And then once you're done with that, um, yeah, we'll just put the back back on. So yeah, you just want to give um, both that, that lip around the housing there and the back, you want to clean out all that adhesive that's on there from before because it might prevent it from sealing properly. So just scrape that off with tweezers and you can use some isopropyl alcohol as well. Yeah, I know I took that black piece of rubber off in this video. Um, that's there to prevent the back of the uh, housing from touching the back of the circuit board. Um, it's not really necessary because there is a pretty big gap and they're probably not going to touch anyways, but you can keep that in there just to be safe. Or if, you've, if you have discarded it, you can also put a piece of captain tape. But yeah, it, sh it should still be okay even if you take it out. But yeah, putting the back back on, um, I like to use some super glue, not the hard drying stuff like I've mentioned in the previous videos. Use like a phone specific super glue, something that dries real rubbery. Um, I like to use this glue called B7000. That's probably the best glue you can get for um, phone repairs and stuff like that. Because if you ever do need to open the device again, you will be able to. So yeah, and a lot of, a lot of super glues, that's just not possible. So yeah, you use a glue like this, use B7000. Yeah, just go all the way around the outside there and then um, put the thing back together. Yeah, just copy what I do. You have to put it in a specific way because one side has clips and the other side has a little locking thing. You'll figure it out, you'll understand when you see it. And then um, yeah, you kind of want to just hold the thing together for like maybe a minute or two just while that super glue starts to dry initially because um yeah sometimes it can pop off pop up a little bit because a lot of these aftermarket batteries they're not as thin as the originals so yeah if you want to go the extra step you could probably put a rubber band around it and let it to set for like a day or something but that's probably not necessary maybe just don't use the clip for the first day and yeah that's pretty much done so yeah thanks for watching if you like the video give it a like subscribe to the channel all that stuff uh, i'd like to mention i have launched a new website just this week so yeah check that out i sell a bunch of uh, refurbished ipods ipod parts and i also have started a mail-in ipod repair service so if you're interested in that if you're interested in booking a mail-in repair just check that out uh yeah all right see you next time thanks